Good morning, America and the rest of the world. Xander J. Hobson here, stand-up comedian, entertainer, director, and producer of boxing documentaries and internet troll to those who need internet troll. This is another episode of The Devil's Advocate brought to you by the Brilliant Artist Movement. I'm trying to grow my platform, so please subscribe, like this video, hate this video, share it. Leave a comment in the comment section. It could be something nice, we could be something nasty, but just know if you say something slick and greasy in my comment section, I'm gonna be on your punk ass like a leopard. I'm the trolls, troll, and trolling me will not be tolerated. So, years ago, I heard one of my favorite radio hosts in Philadelphia, Reggie Bryan, say, do not allow the word nigga to get you so outraged that it takes you completely off of your square. Often enough, my parents used to say, a nigga is a state of mind, not a race of people. And basically, the word nigga derives from the word negro. And nigger comes from illiterate people who couldn't pronounce the Spanish word for black, negro. So why am I discussing this? Well, I was watching my main man, the lead attorney, and he was having a conversation with a young lady who was of Hispanic and African descent. Is it a fact or is it not a fact that you call a black man a nigger? It is a fact that I called a black man a right, bitch so ass nigger that was acting like a bitch ass nigger. The woman wasn't lying. She called it like she saw it. And Donovan Sharp, although an intelligent man and good at business and he can make videos and he learned how to monetize YouTube and get the most out of YouTube, that young woman didn't lie when she called it like she seen it. Now, a lot of people got mad at this young woman because she simply spoke the truth as she saw it. And I don't see what the problem is. Well, in all actuality, I do see what the problem is. To quote my girl, Candace Owens, a lot of black people are emotionally immature. And they hear the word nigger and they just go to pieces. But that's only when they hear the word nigger coming from someone they perceive as not being worthy of using the word. Well, first and foremost, this young lady. Okay, my father aesthetically would look like a regular black African American man. My mother is more of a Spaniard Latina. That's why I look the way I look. She's mixed. Basically, if you look at the young lady, if she didn't say that I was Latina, you wouldn't know if she was Hispanic or if she was some light-skinned black chick. So, that young lady, although she detests the notion of using the word nigga, she has just as much right to that word as any black person because she has as much black in her as an African-American has in them. And that young lady described the situation perfectly. So looking at you, looking at you, it's clear, and listening to you talk, it's clear that you're Hispanic. But, you know, people classify themselves as, as what they want to classify themselves in 2021, right? And you had been asked recently, what do you consider yourself? And you said Afro-Latina, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, you feel like you're black, right? It's fine. But, you know, and, and it, you know, that could be the case. I'm just trying to figure out because it seems like you're saying, well, with the scab comment and black people do this and you guys should not do this and you guys should not do that. It doesn't seem like you feel like you are a part of us. Or does, right, or, right. Uh, uh -huh. no, you're absolutely right. I am not. There's a difference between Afro-Latina and African-American. The cultural differences are there, whether we like it or not. I would never say I am a black American woman. That is not how, I am not a black American woman. I am an Afro-Latina. I grew up in a Hispanic home. 
it is a cultural difference. The slave ships dropped slaves off in Puerto Rico, in Cuba, in Haiti, in the United States, in the Bahamas. And it's all a matter of which flag you were under when you came over from Africa. You might have been under a Spanish flag. You might have been under a British flag. You might have been under a French flag. Or you might have been under an American flag. But the bottom line, in all the United States and the Caribbean, you have a mixture of blacks and whites. Jamaicans are English slaves. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, they're Spanish slaves. Haitians are French slaves. So that same mixture of light skin and dark skin that you have amongst the blacks here in America, you have that same mixture of light skin and dark skin with the Jamaicans, with the French, with the Spaniards. So that young lady in using the word nigga, she's licensed to use the word nigga the same way a black person who's as, as light as a white dude is licensed to use that word nigga. I'm not not using it because it belongs to black people. That's not why I'm not using the word. It belongs to it belongs Listen. to whoever it is used by whoever comes from communities that I come from. The word nigga with an A at the end is used by everyone who comes from the communities that I come from who are either black or Hispanic. Period. I am born and raised in the South Bronx. My entire family is black and Latin. I have said the word nigga since I could walk. I stopped saying it, okay, because I didn't like it, because I grew up and I felt there was a better way that we can address each other. Now, one of the reasons why I am immune to the use of the word nigga is because, guess what? The use of the word nigga is not going nowhere. It's been around for a very long time. And guess what? It's going to be around for a very long time. Um, it's not going nowhere. You cannot control the use of the word nigga. And now the word nigga has been dialed up. And one can use it in a fashionable manner. So the use of the word nigga is not going anywhere. And for so many people to allow themselves to get worked up when they hear the word, you do yourself a disservice. And that young lady was right when she said. I was very clear. I was telling black people specifically, okay, because of the current time, stop being hypersensitive. Stop letting people bait you into every little conversation. Well, that's the first thing. The scab comment, I will double down because it seems that people think that I regret saying it or I shouldn't have said it because she ain't black. Right? I specifically said to black people, stop wearing your blackness like a scab that you let any person pick off and put you through the pain over and over and over again. Stop wearing your blackness in this country like a scab. Be thicker than that. Be stronger than that. For instance, today you started with, I think that guy was mimicking an ape. I think that guy was mimicking an ape. That comes from your experiences, right? He could have been mimicking a caveman, but your interpretation was, no, he's mimicking an ape. Black people are excitable when they hear the word nigga coming from somebody they perceive as not being worthy to use it, but we use it against each other all the time. And if you're not going to adopt the attitude that the young lady says, everybody should stop saying nigga. Everybody. Not just me. Everybody. Why the fuck you worry about it? You can't get mad. The word nigga or words, period, they belong to everybody. And like it or not, white people are using the word nigga now. And if a white person used the word nigga while they're by themselves, while they're standing in the woods around other white people who use the word nigga, what the hell can you do about it? So why allow yourself to be all caught up? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Unless, of course, someone hits you with an autographed baseball bat. Then, in that case, those names will break every bone in your body. 
And I wasn't talking at, and I wasn't, and I wasn't talking at, no, no, sir. But I said all that to say, folks, I'm on the side of the young lady. As an African-American man, I always tell people, hey, man, I don't let that word bother me because guess what? If I let it bother me, I would be upset all the time. I would be upset when I heard young blacks use it. Of course, I would be upset if I heard somebody white use it. And I would be upset if I heard anyone use it. So I don't let it bother me. Now, I'm going to get ready to sum this up. There's no need to dwell on this subject too much longer. My experience in life comes from the United States Armed Forces. I was in the U.S. Marine Corps. I was in the Pennsylvania Air National Guard. And I was in the U.S. Air Force Reserves. But I said that to say this. I spent a lot of my adult life around white people. And in a lot of cases, I was the only one. And if you've ever been a black person who spent time around white people, and you are the minority, and in my cases, a lot of times, I was the only one, man, them white boys can be rough. And if I was the kind of guy who was emotionally immature, I would have been mad all the time. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even have had a military career because the white boys would have got me out of there a long time ago. Um, I'm from Philadelphia and before the naval base closed in Philadelphia, it was a very good job. But one of the tactics the white guys used to use to get black guys fired from the Navy Yard was to call him a nigga and get the black guy all worked up so he can get into a fight lose his job. So, I said all that to say, African Americans, we got to stop wearing our feelings on our sleeves. There are a lot of people in the world who know about slavery, but they don't give a damn about the plight of the black man because they too busy worrying about their own struggles. We can't be excitable. We got to be a lot more emotionally mature when it comes to dealing with bullshit that can take us completely off of our square. Something happens, next thing you know, black folks start riding and tear up their own fucking neighborhood and they set themselves back farther than they already are. So with that said, I just figured I'll give my own twist and my own input on this matter of the use of the word nigga. Don't you see why, don't you think, don't you see why some people are having a problem with it if you're saying that no one should use the word and then you're calling a black man the word nigga. Doesn't that seem a little fucked up? The way you worded it, yes. Listen, all right, so, so do you feel like you owe Donovan Sharp an apology for calling him a, a bitch ass nigga or no? I think that we both owe each other apologies. I'm done with it.